This is the story of the city. The story of a campaign against disease. How it was planned and organized, and how the people responded to it. The city, Columbus, Georgia. The disease, polio. The means of preventing it, immunization. And the actors, the people of Columbus, led by their local health department. The campaign was divided into three separate phases. First, there was a statistical survey to determine who needed the polio shot. Then, community organizations and a publicity program to stimulate people to actively participate in the campaign. And finally, the actual shots themselves offered at 38 different locations in the city. But let's start from the beginning, from the health department, from the briefing session for the survey group. In these surveys, we have found it particularly important to reach preschool children and young adults. And for this reason, we visit households in all parts of the city. We're going to examine various areas to determine whether any of these problems exist here. After the briefing session, the survey gets underway. The group was divided into teams, two persons to a team, and assigned specific areas to sample. Their findings will determine the extent of the need for polio immunization in the various age and economic groups. This is one of the teams arriving at an assigned sampling area, designated as a street intersection. Four families will be interviewed in the vicinity of this intersection, two by each member of the team. The individual houses to be visited were selected by a random process. Meanwhile, other teams were working selected areas all over the city areas selected to give an accurate picture of the extent of polio immunization in all sections of the city. The survey must be comprehensive and show immunization levels in different economic groups. Now this is necessary in order to design the immunization campaign to cover areas of greatest need. Statistical analyses of the results of the survey determine the need for immunization in different parts of the city. A later survey will demonstrate how well the campaign achieved its objective. The results of the survey were reported by the leader of the survey group. From the survey, we found that the immunization levels of children under five were generally low in all four areas of Columbus. However, the levels in areas one and two were higher than the levels in area three and four. Among children of school age, however, the levels were all much higher, but again, a difference was noted in the levels uh, in area one and two as compared with area three and four. In the young adult group, this same pattern could be seen. The Commissioner of Health immediately made these results available to the local medical society and obtained their endorsement of the program. The health department, with the endorsement of the medical society, proposes to put on a, an intensified polio vaccination program in this community. As you know, for the past several years, we have had an active polio immunization program in this community in which you have participated wholeheartedly and very actively. Also, other community groups have been active in their participation in this program, such as the PTAs, 
the uh, Junior Chamber of Commerce, the Board of Education, and others. Next morning, the campaign was in headlines. The campaign immediately became a prime issue with the staff of the health department. In the general staff conference, you have already heard uh, a discussion of the immunization project, uh, pilot project in this community. So this morning I felt that we should get together and plan or point out some areas in your nursing districts where people may not be as well immunized against poliomyelitis as they should be. And in addition to this information, if you will uh, give me some idea of where good uh, stations might be located. Our environmental health division would not normally be involved in the polio vaccination clinic. This is an effort, however, to reach 100% of the uh, susceptible population of our community. And each of you in the field and Mrs. Morgan uh, have numerous contacts with people who will have families that need to be reached in this campaign. You should be thoroughly informed with this uh, campaign so that you can answer any question. That may arise. Well, there are several hundred people in here, and we certainly want to reach them, but uh, uh, which would be better, a station here or one here, if you had to make a choice? Well, they're pretty much at, I would say here that we could go in to cover this group on a Friday. You, you reach more people here. The Commissioner of Health contacted representatives of all civic organizations, inviting them to a mass meeting to discuss objectives of the program. The Commissioner guided the meeting to a detailed discussion of the ideas of the community leaders. The object of this meeting this morning is to explain to you the various uh, methods and techniques that will be used in putting on this vaccination program. We have a fairly good immunization rate among certain groups of the population, particularly the school group due to the fact that we've had a compulsory soft vaccine program in the schools for the last two years. But there are certain groups in the community that haven't been vaccinated properly. And this program is designed to reach uh, those groups. During our March of Dimes campaign, our Mother's March is one of our finest helpful organizations, and I'm sure they can be a lot of help in this campaign, and if we get it properly cleared, I'm sure we can do it. There's one thing that I sincerely believe, that if we can ever get them in for the first shot, we certainly shouldn't fail to get them in for the second and third shot. We feel that as a gimmick, it would be well to use a portable merry-go-round for these mobile units, and the JCs can get one for you. How many clerical workers we need each day? I believe the J sets would be able to furnish at least a minimum number for each day's work. Next came action by the community organization. Publicity. The Junior Chamber of Commerce plastered the city with posters. The local transportation company cooperated by displaying posters and car cards. Group participation by community organizations was encouraged. Everyone that you come in contact with during the day, your neighbors, your business associates, that you have had the uh, vaccination and that you recommend it for them and for the entire community. One thing that we would like for you to do is to come to one of the vaccination stations as a group. Your appearance there will lead other citizens in the community to come in for their vaccination. Local ministers attack polio from the pulpit. My friends, 
I want to talk to you this morning about the babies and breadwinners polio campaign. I know you are interested in keeping the sound, healthy bodies God has given you. I am sure you will go out and get the protection that is available for you free of charge. The first shot. I am sure that the members of my church will be happy to cooperate in the community polio campaign. And I shall be happy to announce the program from my pulpit. Telephone switchboards worked overtime as members of the volunteer organization passed the word throughout the community. Word of mouth communication with business houses, factories, individuals, with as many people as could possibly be reached in this manner was basic to the success of the campaign. Local radio stations added their voices to the campaign. Several thousand young adults are in need of vaccination the babies and the breadwinners. The Muskogee County Health Department is making these polio shots available to all who want them. Special vaccination stations are being set up all over town. Watch the news media for an announcement of the time and the place nearest you. Billboards and window displays provided additional impact. Television stations included polio on regularly scheduled programs. When are you going to give me the shot? I already gave it to you, Colonel Church. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bozo. Now, let me explain something to you. Here in Muskogee County in Columbus, we are trying to have the highest amount of people vaccinated against polio in the whole United States. And I just had my shot from Dr. Reagan, and it's your turn now. It doesn't hurt. I'll guarantee you, you won't feel a thing. All he does, lift, pull up your sleeve, it shoots you in the arm, and then you'll have your polio vaccine, okay? All right. Now, do your duty, doctor. Okay, stand by, Bozo. Two, three. That's all. It's all That's all, all, Bozo. You're now inoculated. Isn't that great? Before the immunization stations opened, the Junior Chamber of Commerce began a house-to-house -house canvas. Good afternoon. Hello. I'm Bill Jones from the Columbus Junior Chamber of Commerce. We're in the neighborhood advertising this uh, polio vaccine station that's set up up at Hershey's Grocery this afternoon. Yes, sir. They'll be up there at 7 o'clock to give free polio shots to you and, and any members of your family. I'm Robert George with the Columbus Junior Chamber of Commerce. There's going to be a free polio station set up here in your community in the Randy Chicken Shack, and we would like for you and your family to come down. And the Chief of Police endorsed the program and cooperated in many practical ways. Are they going to have traffic problems? If you're in the traffic division, I want you to assist them every way you possibly can. And anything you can do for them, I want you to go all out. And uh, that tomorrow, at 12th Street and Broadway, they're going to have a station there. And they will probably have some traffic problems there. And I want you to be there. At a meeting of all station personnel, volunteer workers were thoroughly briefed. The teams, as he mentioned, we do have, we have five teams here. So for the Friday's team, team number one, the team captain is Mr. Charles Munn. He will be located, uh, his team first will consist of himself, Dr. Reagan, uh, two nurses from St. Francis Hospital, and two volunteers. Now, we can't... Thank you, Jack. Uh, at this time, we would like team number one to come up to the table here where we have the equipment uh, displayed and actually set up a station as they will tomorrow, and we would like to ask that all the people in the room volunteer to have a shot. Uh, and now that he's finished, will you come around this way and get your button, please? Free polio shot today at O'Neill's grocery store. 
Let's make Columbus the best vaccinated city in America. Children, bring your parents. free polio shot today at Hershey's store. Join the march to health at Hershey's store. Get your free polio shot today at Hershey's store. A simple injection means polio protection. Let's make Columbus the best vaccinated city in America. Children bring your parents, and parents bring your children. Hershey's store. Ten days after the program was first announced, television and newsmen gathered to record the grand opening of the polio station on the main street of the city. The mayor was there. He got the first shot. than another for the benefit of photographers. Nursing schools used the campaign as a practical training ground for student nurses. The mayor remained to see the community effort well on its way. It was an extremely pleasant start, a good omen for the campaign. Let's make Columbus the best vaccinated city in America. Children, bring your parents, and parents, bring your children. Get your free polio shot today at 12th and Broadway. Doc pulls gun on cop. Good publicity depends on taking advantage of unusual situations. This action made the front pages. Civic clubs had immunization parties. They came in groups to get their shots. The JSS had a big following. Mobile stations were set up in selected locations in other sections of the city. These locations were changed each day. Card tables and folding chairs were readily portable. And the station was in operation almost immediately. Station number two was located at a large shopping center. Station number three was set up at a busy street intersection in a crowded neighborhood. Popular grocery store served as the background for mobile station number four. Every shot won a balloon.
In another section of the city, a food store in a shopping center helped to attract people to mobile station number five. The mobile stations were moved to new locations each day. This was station number two on the second day of the campaign. Small industries and large factories were a scheduled part of the program. Special events were handled by a roving immunization station, which could respond quickly to any special situation, as in the case of these contestants in the Miss Columbus beauty pageant, who helped to publicize the program. At the completion of the campaign's initial phase, exactly eight days and 38 locations later, one quarter of the city's population had received either their first, second, or third shot. Although Columbus was a relatively well immunized city at the start of the campaign, it is apparent that this phase was successful beyond anticipation. The program will continue in two additional immunization efforts each three weeks apart. The final answer will be determined by a statistical study which can then be related to the original survey. Meanwhile, new protection from polio has been assured to the previously unprotected babies and breadwinners of Columbus, Georgia.